Hi, I'm Justin Spence. I'm a product specialist here at PreSonus Audio. Should I be looking at that thing that you're pointing at me? All right. Um, so since we came out with the 1642, folks have been asking us, hey, when are you going to make a 32-channel mixer? And we made a 24, and we could have obviously slapped eight more faders and eight more preamps on it, but we thought we'd take it to the next level in uh, traditional Persona style. Um, so let's take a look. What did we do? What did we put in it? And then we'll talk about how we did it. Um, the first thing I like to focus on is the fat channel. is a 24-channel fat channel. Um, it's the variable high-pass filter, gate, compressor, EQ, limiter, and a four-band fully parametric EQ. Um, but there's a new little feature on there called the Alt-A-B button, which allows me to have two presets recalled, not simultaneously, but that I can A-B back and forth through. So what I can do is, for instance, if I've got a kick drum, I recall a kick drum channel. It sounds cool, but I think I can make it better. I go to Alt-B, I tweak that preset. I make it worse because I don't know what I'm doing. I go back to the original one and it sounds better again. And you could do that on all of the, anywhere basically there's a select button. So all your channels, your subs, the main mix, aux returns, the four stereo 32-bit DSP effects processors, and all of your 14 auxes. So the mixer does have 14 auxes, four stereo effects processors, guys. So two reverbs, two delays. It has 16 graphic EQs, so that's a gajillion fat channels. You can quote me on that. It's a gajillion. It's 14 auxes, 16 graphics, and then these four uh, reverbs and delays can run simultaneously. Everything on. We're not losing anything. You don't have to turn this thing off to use this thing. Everything can run simultaneously all at the same time, which is really important. Yes? Can the auxes be linked stereo for in they absolutely can be linked stereo. So it's seven stereo, and they're uh, uh, grouped in pairs, one, two, three, four, okay, five, so six. Not one to 14, right. right. Absolutely. Um, so a couple of new little features here. We had some, some real estate, so we're like, what are we going to put right there? So we have our mute groups, and you'll notice we've got mute groups all on, all off. Something you may notice that you've never seen before on the 1642 and the 2442 is those buttons up top are red. They're not post buttons anymore. That's actually a, a, a pre-screen. We're changing that. We're mutable. The auxes are mutable now. They weren't before. So you could make a group just to uh, mute the auxes and then go up on stage and pull microphones if you want to and not blow up your monitors while you're up there. Another really cool feature, a lot of... A lot of quick scene changer guys that need to change scenes constantly. They wanted some mix scenes to be able to quick recall. So you've got eight uh, scenes that you could store right here. So you find what you want and just press and hold it and it stores that scene in there. And then it's quick store or quick recall here. It's not super hard to do here. It's just a roll and touch. But if you had them all right there, it makes a lot more sense to just have it at your fingertips. Oh yeah, you could just do it one at a time, absolutely. And then you could create your own predefined group if you just wanted to have the aux mutes or sub mutes or channel mutes, which is kind of a convenient thing to have. Craig is gonna is gonna have to call you back later. He's in a meeting right now. <laughs> All right. So up top, you might have noticed something that's super super important. We have our input buttons, and as you all probably know, it's analog input, and then when you hit the input buttons, it's the streams from the, from the computer, right? So it's no longer a FireWire symbol. It's a digital symbol, which means it's a FireWire 800 interface built into the 3242, okay? Right, and it's also, we're shipping it with a card option on the back, so we'll be introducing Dante into the Studio Live 3242 AI, and then to follow after that will be Thunderbolt. Now, how soon for Dante seven, eight years, I think. No, oh no, that's that's not correct. I think we're looking at the end of the year that we're shooting for, and then Thunderbolt will follow after that. I don't really have an ETL on that. Uh, we actually haven't tested that because I haven't even connected one of these to a computer yet. But I don't see why not with the appropriate adapters that we can test and approve and then support. We'll probably have a couple of different options for folks. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we probably it probably is backwards compatible. I've only gone 8 to 4. I've never gone 4 to 8, so we'd have to check. I, I assume it would work. Uh, 
the yeah. question would be how many streams we can do. That's going to limit your streams. It's going to limit some stuff that way. So um, the important thing, what is AI and how do we get all of this power? This is a lot more power. So I'm going to kind of turn it over to Steve and let him talk to you about AI, which is active integration, and how we make it happen. Okay, so active integration is really a complex of technologies, a combination of technologies that is not only going to be behind this mixer, but behind the speakers that we're going to show you and some future products. Active integration is a combination of the, the DSP that we're putting into this thing. We're using a, a Texas Instrument OMAP uh, a Cortex ARM processor, 450 megahertz processor, and a whole lot of really fast RAM. Uh, and that is driving this entire mixer now. So it's running Linux. We can add features by programming it. Uh, there's a lot more this board will do down the road as a result of that. And we'll return to that when we get to other possibilities with AI. When you think about it a minute, you have that. Then you have the wireless networking and wired networking built into this. So we have two forms of, of that. Uh, one, one which Vanna, I mean Justin, has here. That's a little Wi-Fi LAN adapter. Plugs into a dedicated USB 2 control port. Um, the purpose of that one would be to set up an ad hoc type network, uh, a network very similar to as if you were hosting with your laptop. So for an environment like in a small room or you know a corporate boardroom, something like that, that would be great. But if you want a really robust Wi-Fi signal, ad hoc's not going to do it. So there's an Ethernet port on the back that you can either do a hard wire to an Ethernet network or attach to a router, and then you can have a really robust Ethernet you know, based router network, which is what we're doing out front there. So you have all of these options. So active integration gives you the DSP, it gives you the wireless communication, it gives you the wired communication, it also gives you the integrated software. So, you know, which Justin will get more into the software bundle in a moment. Now, keep in mind Dante's coming also. We're going to have intelligent networking on these things. These products will be able to talk to other AI products. Um, so, we will have products that are intelligently aware of each other. So it's not just, yeah, you can pass audio. There's a lot more coming. Um, so I think that kind of gives you the basis of what's behind this, and it'll also give you a place to start with the next few things that Justin's going to talk about. Okay, so the same software suite that's integrated with the Studio Live 1602, 1642, and 2442 is still available on the Studio Live 3242 AI. Um, it's going to come with a Universal Control 1.7 with the VSL and the smart integration into VSL with room control, all that good stuff, right? Also, you've got Studio One Artist 2.5 that ships free in the box as well. Uh, so QMix wireless control, SO remote, all of that stuff still free with this mixer. Now, what we've done is we've gone and upgraded Capture to Capture 2. So we've had Capture 1 was has been shipping Capture 2.0 will start shipping when we ship the 3242 AI. Now, Steve Oppenheimer, in Steve Oppenheimer fashion, was griping and complaining, saying that Capture 1 and its two-button recording or two-click recording was too, just too many clicks. So we changed it in Capture 2. It is now just one click, record now, and you start recording. Because of the integration in, with the hardware and software, it automatically sees that a 32 channel is connected to your computer. It makes 32, uh, 32 tracks and configures the inputs and outputs automatically. So you don't have to do anything. You don't need to know anything about recording. All you need to know is how to launch a program and how to hit a button and you're going, which is a really great thing. Now some cool features that have been added, a lot of safety features have been added to Capture 2. Um, the first is a pre-roll pre record, or like cache is recording up from 5 uh, seconds to 60 seconds. So if the program is launched, it is caching any audio that is coming in through the interface. And if you hear the band start playing, you're like, oh no, I forgot to hit record. Bam, you can hit record and you didn't lose the first part of their uh, performance. Up to 60 seconds. So from 5 seconds to, so the lowest setting is 5, That's highest is 60. Bad. Yeah. You could really be, really be off, off, off your, off your game, if you know what I mean. Um, also, there's a new file management system. There's um, the stereo playback, which is kind of cool. Before, you have to have capture to play back through the mixer, so you could have a. There's no mix engine in it. Now you can use Core Audio or 
um, uh, the ASIO driver on a PC, and you can pl have stereo playback through your computer, which is kind of cool if you wanted to just listen back to it on your uh, laptop while you're cruising to the next show. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you could do a little bit of stuff in Capture, but it's primarily just to check to make sure you didn't mess anything up, you know, with some headphones on your computer. Um, virtual sound check tools. Very, very cool new thing. If I create a new session, it's primarily just to start going and recording, right? But I may want to do a virtual sound check while the band's not there and kind of get some, get some settings on my channels. Um, so what we'd normally do is we'd open another session or a couple of sessions that I'd recorded from a band that was like that band or from that band previously, play it back into the channels and get a virtual sound check going. Now what I can do is open one session, use the virtual sound check tool dialog, pull in some tracks, pull in some other tracks to replace those tracks, and then remove them from the same session, and then just start recording all in the one session. So it makes it a lot faster for me, instead of having three or four windows open, I can just have the one window open and do the virtual sound checks, get rid of them, and start recording. Um, um, there's, a, there's a lock on the transport, so now you have to make a conscious effort to unlock it and stop the recording which is kind of a good feature because you don't want to accidentally do it with a quick key or hit the space bar or something like that. Right, it's, it's, been, it's kind of a bummer. Um, and then last but certainly not least, there's big meter mode for all who wear glasses and all who wear contacts. So if you're at the mixer, because, because the integration is when I'm trimming the preamp right behind the converter, it sends a signal over fire wire, just like it does through the channels. So... The metering here is exactly the same metering as in, that's in the box. So now I've got that big meter mode, and I can be over here at the mixer and just look at the computer and have even bigger meters than what's on the mixer if I want to. So that's a pretty cool thing to have. And that is Capture 2. Now, yes, of course. In the booklet, it says 96 kilohertz. That's correct. That's going to be a future version of the Studio Live Mixer, correct. There's a lot of, the computer is, we're not even tapping into its resource. And because it's running the Linux OS, we can get in there and code it how we want to. That capability is available. We haven't decided what we're going to do just yet. So right now, 48, 44. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I, what I want for Christmas is 96, but who knows. I don't always get what I want. Um, one thing I don't want to forget, and we, I forgot a couple times, is the PRM1. We have a Rational Acoustic Smart integration into VSL with three room wizards that's really simple for the user to use. But they were like, hey, what kind of mic do I need to use? And we said, well, why don't we just get a mic for you? We'll make a mic. And so we have. It's a $99 Personas measurement mic that you can plug into your talkback, go into Universal Control, hit a couple of buttons, and you can start actually tuning your room, calculating delay times, and testing speaker outputs. Very simple setup. So don't forget about the PRM1.